This video is the second in a series where we walk through the stock analysis of each of the FANG stocks. We're going to cover Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Microsoft, and Google. Today we're going to talk about our analysis of Netflix. Netflix is one of the world's leading entertainment services with 222 million paid memberships in over 190 countries, enjoying TV series, documentaries, feature films, and mobile games across a wide variety of genres and languages. Members can watch as much as they want, anytime, anywhere, on any internet connected device. Subscribers can also play, pause, and resume watching all without commercials or commitments. Netflix has received over 800 award nominations and over 250 awards for its original content. Netflix revealed that it gained an additional 16 million subscribers in the first quarter of 2020 as billions of people around the world were forced into quarantine and social distancing. Netflix single-handedly accounts for 10% of the downstream internet traffic worldwide and it's willing to pay $20 million per hour for original content. First quarter earnings highlights. They had a 10% revenue growth in Q1 2022. Operating income of $2 billion was above the beginning of quarter forecast of $1.8 billion due to lower than projected content expenses. EPS was $3.53 versus $3.75 a year ago. Here's a breakdown of Netflix's products and services segments, domestic streaming, international streaming, and domestic DVD. Now let's break down these business segments in terms of revenue in 2021. Domestic streaming made up 44% of revenue. International streaming made up 56%. Domestic DVD made up 1%. So let's talk about domestic streaming. United States and Canada paid net additional memberships were negative 0.6 million, largely because of their price change, which is in line with Netflix's expectations and is significantly revenue positive. A big focus is how to monetize sharing the 100 million households using another household's account. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big opportunity as these households are already watching Netflix and enjoying their service. Early last year, Netflix started testing different approaches to monetize sharing and in March introduced new, two new paid sharing features where current members have the choice to pay for additional households in three markets in Latin America. While Netflix won't be able to monetize all of it right now, we believe it's a great short to midterm opportunity. Now let's talk about the international streaming segment. In Central and Eastern Europe, there were negative 0.3 million paid net additional memberships or positive 0.4 million excluding the Russia impact. This slowdown in the business in March coincided with Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. In Latin America, paid net additional memberships totaled negative 0.4 million, similar to recent quarters. Netflix believes that this is due to a combination of forces, including macroeconomic weakness and their price changes dragged on their membership growth. Netflix is making great progress in the Asia Pacific, where there's growth in a variety of markets, including Japan, India, Philippines, Taiwan, and Thailand. The paid net memberships were, were plus 1 million. Over the long term, much of Netflix growth will come from outside the US. Traditionally, US entertainment companies have viewed international as just an export market for US content. But Netflix believes that the great stories can be made anywhere and loved by everyone. So they're broadening their pool of creators that they work with, increasing the variety of their programming and better serving local tastes. Next, we'll talk about the domestic DVD segment and the revenues here have decreased by 24% in 2021 compared to 2020, but they're still hanging on despite the growth of the streaming services. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's take this all back to Netflix, the company. Netflix is now producing films and TV in more than 50 countries with a high degree of integration in the local entertainment ecosystem, resulting in the creation of blockbusters from every region. In fact, three out of their six most popular TV seasons of all time are non-English language titles like Squid Game, La Casa del Papal, and All of Us Are Dead. These launched in quarter one of 2022 and have accumulated 561 million hours viewed in their first four weeks. So an important focus for them is working to extend Netflix's lead in this area. Next, let's take a look at revenue growth. And we can see from this chart that the average revenue growth year over year is about 25%. Next, we wanna look at EPS growth. And in this chart, you can see that the average EPS growth per year is 34%. The next chart shows free cash flow, and the average free cash flow growth over the past five years is negative 5%. So now let's take a look at the business life cycle. Netflix's primary revenue generator has been streaming memberships. But with the streaming market becoming increasingly saturated, some imply that the company is at the maturity phase of its life cycle and is approaching a crossroads. 
Netflix could experience either a rebirth or a slow decline as its services face increasing competition. Next, let's take a look at the five-year chart for Netflix. And as you can see, it's no longer, the price is no longer following the trend line from its September 2019 low, and it's pretty clearly off the rails, and who knows where it's going to stop at this point with this uh, latest earnings report. It suffered some major losses in 2018, 2019, and during the COVID low in 2020. And now it's actually at a 70% drop from its previous all-time high, where it was also up 176% from its September 2019 low. Mm. So it's had quite the ride <laughs> and quite a bit ride. of volatility <laughs> over the past several years. The gray lines are support and resistance lines where the stock previously has had multiple reactions in the past. So look for similar reactions at those price points moving forward. As you can see, the price has already broken through several support lines and nobody knows at this point when it's gonna start rallying. But we're watching the next support level around $200. Now when it comes to valuation, we look at over 12 different models to calculate fair value of the stocks that we track. Fair value is the real or underlying intrinsic worth. Based on 12 different models, we believe Netflix's average va fair value is $344, leaving 60% upside potential from the current price. From 36 analyst targets, Netflix's average target price is $347. Its 52-week low is $212 and its high is $701. Here's what the bulls say about Netflix. Netflix's internal recommendation software and large subscriber base gives the company an edge when deciding which content to acquire in future years. Netflix has also built a substantial content library and that's gonna benefit the company over the long term. Also, international expansion offers attractive markets for additional subscribers. Netflix has a narrow economic moat based on intangibles resulting from the use of big data stemming from their massive worldwide subscriber base. According to Warren Buffett, an economic moat is a distinct advantage a company has over its competitors which allows it to protect its market share and profitability. The average analyst target price is $427, well over the current stock price. 10-year revenue growth is 25% and EPS growth is 43%. Netflix has a sufficient margin of safety. And Warren Buffett actually recommends buying stocks at a 40% discount from their fair value price to account for potential calculation errors and unknown factors. Next, let's take a look at what the bears are saying about Netflix. Netflix continues to burn billions of dollars of cash to create its original content with no end in sight. The level of competition in the US and internationally is increasing and will continue to do so over the future. Let's take a look at this share of total US TV time, for example, and you can see how other streaming services have grown by 1.8%. Disney Plus has grown by 0.8%, which is nearly double what it was previously. And Netflix grew by only 0.6%. And this was between May 2021 and February 2022. Disney Plus launched its own branded subscription video on demand service in the second half of 2019. Plus, you have Peacock, Amazon Prime, Apple TV+, Plus, Hulu, HBO Max, and many others. The need for increased content and marketing spent outside of the U.S. will limit the rate of margin expansion for the international segment, and their debt-to-equity ratio is over 114%, and we prefer this to be under 40% per Warren Buffett's advice. Okay, so we've gone through a lot of information in our stock analysis. We went through what the bulls think, what the bears think, but you guys might be wondering, what do, what do we think? <laughs> <laughs> we currently own Netflix stock and we added to our position, especially when it dropped the 35% after the most recent earnings report. While we agree with some of the points that the bears are making, we still like Netflix as a long-term investment and we're excited about that international growth potential that we talked about that lies ahead in the future for it. With the addition of competitors like Disney Plus, especially in other streaming services, we did decide, uh, back when Disney Plus was first launching, we did decide to reduce our overall planned allocation for, for Netflix just because of those competitors, specifically Disney coming mm -hmm. up. Um, and then as we went through how fast Disney Plus is growing, that kind of just yeah. <laughs> makes our point. Yeah. Um, Amber and I do personally like Netflix. We like Disney Plus too, watching that original content. Um, and we do watch it as often as we can with <laughs> three, three kids. And we have five. followed it since you could Order oh, DVDs that, yeah, online. that's right. It was funny when we were doing the research uh, for this video, we were re reminiscing about the DVDs and how that was originally how Netflix started. And we actually started off with that, you know, when they first started, we were in DVDs all, all day long, uh, <laughs> two of them at a time. So it's funny to see how far it's come. So it'll be exciting to see where it goes the next 20 years. Yeah, I agree. 
To help our channel grow, please do three things for us right now. First of all, give us a thumbs up, hit the notification bell so you're alerted of our new videos, and subscribe to our channel. We would love to hear what you think about Netflix. Do you already own the stock and do you think that the Netflix investors are on track or are they kind of missing something? Be sure to check out our other stock analysis videos for companies like Apple, Tesla, Neo, and Alibaba. Also check out this video where we break down our top holdings in our million dollar stock portfolio. Thanks so much for watching guys. We'll see you later. Thanks guys. See you next week.